Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be covering something that is near and dear to my heart, uh, which is the automation of software engineering. Uh, about seven years ago, this documentary that you're watching clips from came out called Humans Need Not Apply. Great documentary, by the way. I recommend watching it. Um, where they were talking about how this new time we're heading into, where this new era of automation is going to be the most disruptive we've ever seen. It's going to be way different than the Industrial Revolution. Now, I happen to disagree with that, uh, but I think it's ironic. Like, what if the first jobs to be automated out of existence are actually software engineer jobs? <laughs> that would just be too funny, right? Too ironic. What you're watching here is alpha code from DeepMind actually solving a challenge using the plain text on the left there that describes what the challenge is. And this was part of a um, coding, I forget the name, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to the challenge, but alpha code finished like at the median of the human engineers who took part in these challenges. It can actually read the spec file, produce the code, and what you're watching here right now is alpha code actually solving the solution, going through, and reading the, the descriptor and actually writing the code in real time. Now, if this doesn't blow your mind, <laughs> I don't know what will. But like I saw this, I was like, oh man, this I get excited when I see stuff like this because it can save me from the mundane aspects of engineering, which in a lot of cases is writing the code. Um, and, the, and alpha code is not the only solution out there. This is GitHub's Copilot. And Copilot's really cool, actually. I've seen some demos where you can make Instagram feeds with it. You can do all kinds of really cool solutions. And it, it supports more languages. Alpha code, I believe, is only C++ and Python, whereas um, uh, Copilot does like TypeScript, JavaScript, which are heavily used in building front-end web applications. It does Go, which is a great, um, uh, highly performant language for doing um, multi-threading and some, some stuff we have to do that is um, processor intensive in our API layer. So it's a great, great set of languages it supports. And it can automate test uh, uh, creation, which is like so mundane, right? And so, like, to me, this is amazing. Like, I want to get this integrated into my workflows, but there is a challenge here. Um, the, the challenge here is that there's a layer of code that is really hard to automate through the current solutions that are out there, and that's infrastructure as code, right? So what you're looking at here is infrastructure as code written for one of my projects at work, and this is using the CDK. Now, we could debate whether or not you want to use the CDK, if you want to use CloudFormation, or you want to use other abstraction technologies like Terraform. We heavily leverage Terraform, but this was just something our team threw together. But there's like hundreds of lines of this fucking infrastructure as code, which in this case is just telling Amazon how to provision a DynamoDB table and spin up an API. And to me, it's like insane the amount of code we have to write here. So not only do I want a platform that can, um, you know, take advantage of AlphaGo and, and um, Copilot, but I want one that gets rid of infrastructure as code. Man, I wish there was one out there. I wonder if there is. If you answered Foundry, <laughs> you answered correctly. So yeah, um, the great thing about Foundry is, as you're seeing here, when you hit like that build button, yeah, that's all going through a CI/CD build system. It has, it's an online IDE with an integrated build system that automatically deploys and provisions everything for you. So it produces the infrastructure from your code. So this is amazing. This is like one of the things we've been working on in the industry for a long time. So that whole infrastructure as code layer, I don't need to worry about it in Foundry, right? That's amazing. Everything's operationalized out of the box, which means technologies like Copilot and um, Alpha Code, I can drop these right into the code I'm writing and there's no friction there. There's no barrier to me getting that stuff deployed and, and there's no slowdown, which means like if you've heard my conversations lately, like I want my engineers spending all of their time writing features, right? And that's gonna enable my company to iterate faster address user you know, issues faster, get more and more things people are willing to pay for in their hands. Being able to drop those technologies in with no barrier on the other end, not worrying about like how does the code get deployed, having that built in out of the box and then somehow integrating the um, alpha code and Copilot in. Uh, right now I believe Copilot's a, a plugin for the IDE, so I don't know if um, Foundry has a path forward yet for integrating Copilot into the IDE layer, I know that you can write you know, your code and upload it to Foundry through Git and still take advantage of the same deployment features, but um, at least I think you can. Don't, don't hold me to that, we'll find that out soon enough. But um, being able to integrate Copilot and, and um, 
alpha code directly into Foundry is going to be one, I believe, easy, and two, it's going to be no friction, meaning once I write the code with that tool or write the descriptors and the code is produced and I review it, I can publish it right away. There is no infrastructure of code, infrastructure as code that is holding me back and holding me prisoner. So I believe Foundry is very well positioned to take advantage of these tools in the coming future.